Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. So this gem dropped into some of my Twitter comments recently and I want to show you this beautiful gem because as you can see on screen here, this is a port scanner, but one that you can control very well. Now there are a lot of options to this port scanner. We will get more into the specifics later on as we get it started up, but there are some really cool things that can be done here. Now you might be wondering, okay, Uncle Rat, so I want to try it. Cool, how do I set this up? Well, very simple, my friends. First of all, a lot of you might just want to download this, install Python requirements installed, there we go. But some of you might need Docker for this, and it works best if you download Docker, of course, and then uh, you, for me, the Docker desktop is the one that works best in this instance because it, it installs a Docker daemon itself. But you can do this with just the naked docker daemon as long as you can set up your docker containers now here what we want to do is we want to navigate into the directory that ho oh, look where i am in i'm already one directory too far this is the directory that you will get when you download those files now in this directory we can give some specific sets of commands first one docker up docker compose up dash d this is going to run a docker container in detached mode meaning that it doesn't have to basically when you start a docker container it can take over your whole screen it can keep it busy it can take over your whole terminal window or you can send it to detached mode which sends it to the background and then you don't have to bother with it anymore then we're going to execute that docker exec docker execute a command where do we want it in net attacker master net attacker one that's just the name of the uh, file at the moment check your specific docker files or your specific docker commands at the moment that you're using this but here we're going to execute the bin bash command bin bash as you guys might know is just going to start up a bin bash terminal window here we are we're connected we can do what we can do in a normal terminal window we can do some crazy stuff that apparently, well, of course, what am I cutting, right? So uh, we can do basically whatever we can in a normal environment as well. Now, remember that in specific instances, whatever you do here is just going to be, how do we put this, uh, in, up in thin air whenever you destroy that container. What do I mean by that? If you make a directory, so make there, temp, and let's just uh, give it a random name. There we go. Of course. If we make directories here and we put stuff in there and we kill this container, those files are gone. Just so you know, those files are removed. So you can put them in shared drives as well. You just need to mount that specific drive and put that in a drive where you have put it in your Docker container. <coughs> where you've mounted that drive in your Docker container, I mean. <coughs> not to get into the specifics of that, that is not what this whole project is about. Let's get into the meat and grundy, ugh, the nitty and gritty of this project. I mean, Python net attacker pi, what do we want to attack? We want to attack OWASP.org and we want to do a port scan on this. We can also give it a specific amount of threads and it'll start doing a port scan for us. Well, all nice and pretty, you might be wondering. But let's look at the documentation because this is something that a lot of other repositories do as well, or port scanners, I should say. But here's the cool part about this. You actually have an API that you can start as well, which allows you to look at these things in a more in a reasonable perspective. Like right here, all of these port scans that are being done. All of it is getting put into a report. You might want to view that report later. Well, guess what? You also have a web-based client to view that into, but that's not just it. They also have an IoT scanner in there, and we're going to look at more features later on. So just let's get back to that report real quickly. Let's just end it here. Let's see what we've inputted here. We've given it a dash S, a dash M, port scan, and a dash T. Now, what does that M stand for, my friends? Let's go and dive into the documentation a little bit, shall we? Uh, where is it, wiki? There we go. And here we have some usage guides. So here we can see, uh, where is it? There we go. Scan method options. 
and here we can see what modules we want to use. Now we can see that we have a list of modules, HTTP options, enabled vulnerabilities, click checking vulnerabilities, GraphQL vulnerabilities, CSP vulnerabilities. That is a big list. Well, you can see all modules as well. So let's give that a whirl, shall we? Let's see what that looks like. So we're going to ask it, wow, look at that. Oh, okay, so there are quite a few modules. You can see why I like this already, I think, right? It's not just your basic port scanner. So we have quite a few modules in here. A lot of them are for specific vulnerabilities as well. We have more, my friends. You have profiles as well. So let's look at what profiles we have available to us. Now oh, let's do it. Let's give it a little spin again. WAF, WAF scan. Okay, that's interesting. Wappalizer, web technology scans. Also interesting. Then we have WordPress. Oh, we have quite a few WordPress vulnerabilities that we can search for here with just one profile. We have the same for WP, WP plugins for specific plugins for WordPress. You can see vulnerability in here. We have quite a few specific vulnerability scanners as well. So these profiles bunch together a bunch of modules and they run all at the same time, which is freaking amazing if you ask me. Now, all of this might just remind you of the scripting engine of NNAP. Yeah, it's just a different way of thinking of it, but it also has a lot more. It has more modules available than NMAP scripting engine, for example. And in here, what we also didn't talk about yet is the API. Yes, it has a very specific API that gets started up. Now, I'm just going to show you my key because it doesn't matter at this point anyway. So let's say that we want to start the API. Now, it'll show us an error. Let's see what that is in particular. So let's start the API. Let's go. There we go, port 5000. And this is already in use. So even though you guys may see my API key, there is a problem I haven't found out yet. So once I started this, of course, then I need to find my API key. The problem is that you guys aren't going to see my API key because I'm connecting to an already started up instance of my Docker here. This is my Docker running, I know, but you guys aren't going to see my API key because this is my container and it was already started up and we connected to it. So. While I'm starting up, while I'm doing that Docker Compose, it's actually starting up multiple things in the background if they haven't already started up. Oh, look, poor taken, can't compose anymore, error. So basically, the Docker Compose is starting up a container that's already been started up. It, it doesn't have anything to start up anymore. That port is taken. Now, in here, when we did that last part of the command, when we said execute bin bash in this specific Docker container, well, that's a different story because that was already started. We just connect to it. And now I have my net attacker available. I'm not going to give you my API key. Go work for it. And no, that's not it. And you can also, of course, once you start that API, you can also stop that API, of course. You can give it specific host names. Uh, stopping it by stopping the process, of course, like mine right now. I cannot just stop it. Um, I would have to probably just stop the process at this point and then the port is available or just change the port that it runs on. I can do that as well. And then maybe I can do that. Maybe for another video. Let's do that for another video. We'll just change the port that it's running on as well. But for now, we can also look at the API access logs as well. We can set certain API certificates and certificate keys if we don't want to work with those API keys. So we have options here. As you can see, quite a few modules available, quite a few profiles available. You can include modules, exclude modules, exclude profiles. You can set usernames, password, username lists, password, password list, port numbers, very important of course. User agents, timeouts, time sleep, uh, time sleep between requests, range, subdomains, uh, the threats per host, that T is per host by the way, parallel mode, also really freaking awesome because it can really set 
uh, can really speed things up, but make sure you don't kill your own computer in the process, of course. You can set hardware usage. You can set a SOX proxy if you want to. You can set the number of retries by default three, and you can do a ping before scan. So all of these options, in my opinion, make for a tool that you should check out. Do yourself a favor, give it a whirl, and you'll see why I recommend it. My friends, I thank you very much for this pleasant evening, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, amazing hackers.